Asian Heritage Pacific Asian Pacific Heritage Munch. Wow, I gave in. She quickly. Okay, so Facebook is live. Okay, cool. All right. What's up, guys? Welcome to our live session on Thursday night where we talk about everything and anything with Peter and Frankie. And today we have a wonderful guest today. He's going to come on later on the show around 6.30. And if you guys haven't yet, join our Discord, man. We have live um, shows in there. We're going to be playing the NBA Finals. We're going to be playing one of the fights. We're not sure which fight exactly, but we're going to post it on the story. Jake and Nate for sure, dude. Yes, that's in um, August. So that fight is going to be epic. And uh, shout out to all my EDC people at, at EDC right now or flying to EDC or Vegas. Man, uh, my homie texted me this morning, see if I wanted to go to EDC. And I'm like, man, maybe Sunday. <laughs> it's only three hours away, man. Maybe Sunday, dude. That's tight. Um, I miss EDC, man. I miss raving. Um, when I think about raving, I get the butterflies. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Peter. What up? It's your boy, Peter Yang. <laughs> I'm looking at the schedule. And, uh, what are we doing, brother? Handing it back to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, today we got we, we're just gonna ask questions, man. Okay, you, you throw we're just gonna figure out what what could we do in life to you know make your life better financially, mentally. Okay, shit. Um, things like that. So, uh, <clears throat> first question, man, to 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 come off, bro. Okay, question. Okay. <clears throat> if you were if you were stuck on an island, and your best friend got bit by a venom snake. Oh. No, where this gone? <laughs> okay. Would you suck the venom out of the from his penis okay, to get the where, venom out to save his bit, life? Right. That's where he got bit. He got bit right on his dick. Yeah. Would you okay, my, my, my save his life? Initial initially, right? I would have been like, dog. You know what I'm saying? Just use your hands to jerk off. Don't use the snake's mouth. Okay. So now where you got, you see, I know desperate, desperate situations, you know, there's no other women on this, on this island, but you know, a snake, come on, man, come on. So that's, that's, that's what I would tell you. <laughs> by, by the time you tell me that, I'll probably be dead, man. You had to, you had to make up your mind, man. You're going to suck it or not, suck the venom out or not. <laughs> Throw me at the mouth. Now I'm like, that's what you get. That's what you get. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm assuming that's a no, man. You what a good friend you are, Peter. Sorry, brother. I'd rather be lonely than suck dick. <laughs> you're not sucking dick. You're sucking venom out of us. <laughs> out of your dick. You're sucking venom. You're saving a life, man. You're okay, not. Wait, wait, wait. So, uh, so did you get bit on the tip of your dick, or on the side of your dick, or on the foreskin? Like where? Where exactly? Because if it's because uh, if it's the tip. Right. Let's say. Let's use this as. Let's just say the tip. Let's use this as we know example, the tip. Right? If I had to suck you like this, that's gay, and I'm being lonely. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna do a funeral for you. But if it's like on the side like this, that's not gay. So now I can do that. I can do that. I, bro. Yeah. How you demonstrate it, it was gay no matter what, bro. There's no <laughs> more around it, bro. We needed uh, an example, man. If you did, your, your mic, your mic keeps on like muffling, like it. Oh, like man. I'm not sure. It's it's like in and out too. It's not like it's like uh, it's not consistent. It's like in and out. Is it? You think it might it's be as if just? It's as if like everything you move this way, it sounds different. Like oh. it's 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 weird. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay like this far away and see where, see how. Cause okay, it's yeah. Good right now, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah. good. I think it, I think it's because I'm like way too close. It still sounds good too when you're close. So then, but I don't know. It's it just might, inconsistent. It's like in and out. Okay, it might it might be uh, internet okay. connection. It might be uh, a lag or something. Um, okay. So. All right, I just want to let you know that. Thanks, dude. Um. 
All right, man. So there's no way to go around it. You're gonna say you're gonna say yes to that or or no? Depends. Are you gonna suck the venom? Depends, dude. I told you, dude. If it's like this, no. If it's like this, yes. I got you, dude. It's a fifty-fifty. So um, okay. All right. Well, how about this? How about this one? <laughs> Let's just say if you could bend over and suck your own crotch, okay? Would you feel like you're giving the BJ, or you feel like you're you're having it, you're getting a BJ? Uh, it, it'll be like jerking off, dude. That's all it is. You know what I'm saying? There ain't nothing weird about it. You're just a little flexible than most people. That's all it is. Which one would you feel? Well, you feel like you're giving a BJ more, or you're you're, oh, you're the act getting... of it? Hmm, interesting. Yeah. I never. I would say uh, both. It, it, it really would be both, right? It's a mental yeah. thing. Because like when you're jerking off, like are you jerking someone else's dick? Or are you jerking off your own dick, right? Or something like that. Or are you, are you giving or are you receiving, you know? So it, it would be well, the same thing. If you're, just... Go ahead. if you're jerking somebody off, then that's jerking somebody off. That's different from like you jerking you off, right? So if you... how, how is it the same? See, okay, cool, so cool. this is, this so, is a great yeah. question, dude. This is a great. This is a great. This is a great question. Cause like when you watch, yeah, I pick at least one. When you watching porn, which right? one do you feel? You're watching the dude, huh? fuck a chick, right? And then it's kind of like, you know, are you watching the dude too? Technically, you are, but then you're not attracted to men, right? So that's not gay, cause you're watching the dude, right? Fuck the chick. So if you're jerking off, right? Then it's you're not, jer you know, jerking the dude off. You're just pleasuring sensations right and so if you are able to suck your own dick then um uh then then it's just it's just what, what you feel more? so okay so whenever you're jerking off you are you are you're the one that's getting jerked off technically right yes you feel you feel more of that right so like whenever you blow yourself do you feel like you are doing more of the blow or are you more of the getting the blow i'm, I'm more, There's gotta be I'm more interested in and getting blown off, so so that would be where my focus is. <laughs> okay, interesting. This episode is the hey, highlight man. is the highlight of our career. This was the, <laughs> so far. So hey man, good, <laughs> it's a solid question, Doc. It's a solid question. <laughs> um, but we'll go ahead and move on to the uh, the video segment. Um, I have some videos here uh, that um, Sweet. video that uh, Peter is going to pull up. Uh, great, great questions. Uh, you know, things to definitely ponder on by yourself um, <laughs> and never come out of the closet. Uh, <laughs> all right, here, here's the first one, dude. It's hard to be a little bit gay. <laughs> okay. Women miss you, man, when you're not around. They crave your companionship. So when you come back and you see her, she values the time you spend with her more. If you're always in her face, you cancel plans with your friends, you cancel plans with your family. Baby, I just want to be with you. Sounds romantic, huh? Now? But it ain't. This ain't a Disney movie, bro. This is real life. Then you'll get hit with the I need space talk. Because you're right in her fucking face every day, man. And she has every right to say that. Give me space. Get out of here, man. I don't want to see your fucking... Even you breathing will piss her off. Eventually. So, live your own separate life, man. And then when you have date night, she'll appreciate it. You know what? He's put some effort in. He's taking me somewhere nice. I enjoy being with him. I'm going to miss him when he goes on his business trip. Interesting. Interesting. Do you believe that, uh, you know, men have to regulate their time with, uh, with the woman and have their own separate life to keep value Hmm, I'm not sure. I think uh, I think time away, right, does uh, does help in the relationship, right? So when you're going to work, she goes to work, right? You work separately, um, and then you come together and you, you know, you find appreciation, um, in in doing that, right? Um, I think for me, like um, you know, whenever me and my wife we we go on like a little mini vacation, like a three day getaway. It makes me um, miss my kids more, right? Because, like, with my work schedule, I'm with my kids a lot. 
And man, dude, that's just so much fucking time with my kids. <laughs> it's like, man, I'm starting to hate these kids, man. <laughs> you know, so yeah, that's yeah. why I value my time away, you know, working and, and applying myself is, you know, because I, I mean, I, I apply myself too with with being around the kids, you know, being a father. But like, um, you know, it, it it allows me to be human, right, with other adults, you know. So that's what that's the value of of being away from the people you love, because then you realize why you're working so hard for you know you realize uh how much you know the people you love uh mean to you by by taking time away so i think there is value in that um and i think it's it's, it's really you know more um like where where are you at in the stage of of your relationship too i think in the beginning you know you, you're probably going to want to spend a lot of time together and eventually you do get sick of each other and then, so so it depends on right the maturity of your uh, relationship. Uh, I think for me and my wife, like like we spend a lot of time in the house together, right? Mo- mostly just nurturing the kids. So so like even with that, right? We we uh, we try to find as much time to get away from the kids together, right? And then that's when we, you know, um, like he said, we appreciate those dates and nights. Because, like, even though we're in the same room, we're mentally just not kind of, like, in each other's presence. We're just busy with cooking and cleaning and nurturing the kids and taking them outside, taking them to school, and then me doing this and, then, you know, stuff like that. So, there, there's definitely value in, in time away from each other. What, what, um, what could you, what tips can you give a person that is really in love with, their girlfriend or spouse, whatever that may be, but is disrespected or not missed in a in their relationship. What, what tips can you give them? What's the question? The question is, uh, if they're sick of each other, what can what tips can I give them? Yeah, yeah. If oh. if they're sick of each other, like, what do you what what are your tips? Therapy. <laughs> Therapy, dude. <laughs> you know, if you guys are sick of each other. Before therapy, before therapy, what, what can you do? Uh, love language, man. The five love language, dude. That book, get it, man. Um, because it could be, it could be that right. You you guys aren't communicating, right? I mean, that's the real big piece, man. Is that understanding that communication piece? Um, so so get that down first, right? Understand how to communicate with each other, and then talk about uh your goals, right? you know, how you guys envision your future together, right? Um, And then what compromises can you make, you know, um, while achieving these goals, right? Whether it be a financial goal, career goal, school goal, or, you know, you're trying to get a house together or something like that. Uh, Let's say they have different goals. What do you, what can you do? Different goals, but they have both goals with different goals. Um, So if they're dating, so this is them dating or married? Let's say... A year and a half in, two years in. Dating? Almost, oh yeah, dating, almost okay. basically committed, but then not really committed, committed. Uh, I would say make it work, make it happen, man. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're, if you're, um, your aspirations kind of lead you apart. I, I'm, I'm, I think, you know, honestly, I think you can, like with, especially with today's age, right? The internet uh, and just the accessibility of, just you know all the shit that we have i think you can make it work whether you know you're you're let's say you want to be a uh a social media expert or whatever and and then this other person want to be a um a ceo of a company or some shit like that i don't know uh you make it work it's just communicate discuss your goals and figure that shit out man that and then and then and then therapy <laughs> if you two just can't do it, right. you know. <laughs> Fair enough. It's yeah, it's a lot to it, man. I think it's more complicated than than it is. Um, it's it's a lot to it. Um, but let's go ahead and go to the next one, man. The next video. Good question, man. Thanks for the video too. That's a uh, very informative. Let's see, here. I'm gonna watch it with you. Once a girl knows she has you, it's over and you'll never have her. When I heard you say this in your video, at first I was like, that's not true. But then when you explain it, 
I'm like, that is so true. And it all has to do with a bit of psychology that was discovered about how women fall in love. And what this psychology found is that it all comes down to one thing. And when you do this one thing right, a girl is practically programmed to chase you. She can't help it. And I'm a huge psychology nerd, and I can totally see how this would work on a girl. And she'll think it's her idea to fall for you. And it's kind of sneaky, but in the end, you're giving her what she really wants. I think a big problem for guys is that women are very confusing. Sorry, but you are, you know, we think we're doing everything right. That's and then a girl says, I don't feel it or let's just be friends. And for guys, it's frustrating. Guys will then say that women just like jerks or whatever, but women don't want jerks. You definitely don't want to be a jerk or pretend to be someone you're not. Everything changed for me when I realized that women have this romantic fantasy in their head. It's the same fantasy that is in almost every romance novel that a woman reads. It's the fantasy where she's slowly winning the guy over. I could totally see how this would work. Especially when a guy is not her normal type or older or just doesn't have the usual traits she goes for. Because it's like, why am I thinking about him so much? Why am I trying so hard to get him to like me? Wait a minute, do I like him? Yeah, that's what a lot of guys find, that it's even easier to do this when you're not her type or you're older than the guys that she normally goes for. You talk a lot about romance novels, and you're right. A romance novel is never the nice guy confessing his feelings right away or sending her flowers. It's the build-up and the mystery and just like you explain how to create in your video. So I know there's a link here um, to watch the video. It's free. It's got a really cool intro. I love it. We'll put a link down below. I hope the video... So, um... What do you think, man? Do you think... Um... How do you, what do you think of the video? What's true? What's that's, not true? Uh, that's real good, man. I think I think the chase, right? So so whether you're single, dating, and marriage, I think, it, I think that that uh that fact is um it's in our biology right um because like we we always we're either we're either chasing you know we're we're chasing the prize or we're settling for uh, a a lump of you know shit <laughs> you know what i'm saying so, so i think yeah yeah I mean, when you when you right when you chase that prize right and then uh that chase stops right and this probably happens a lot during marriage, right? You know, in the dating phase and in the single phase, you know, you you, you think they're a catch, and then and then, you know, in the dating phase, you're they're still they're still chasing each other, right? You know, uh, they're still pursuing each other, and then when you get married mentally, right? People turn off, you know, they start bumming, they start you know gaining you know weight, they start you know not dressing up, taking care of themselves, right? Stuff like that. They stop being ambitious in their careers and stuff like that. You know, all of all of that now is, is and then you know, and then now the prize that you were chasing is no longer a prize. It's some kind of, you know, bullshit and then divorce. Divorce happens, you know? So I think definitely uh even in my own marriage, right? Me and my wife, you know, it's it's always kind of been a constant you know, mental tug of war of, oh, she's better than me, and oh, he's better than me. I don't deserve them. I got to do better. So it's it's been that, and that's why I think um, that piece really speaks to me is that like we're 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 still attracted to each other. We're still kind of pushing each other, you know, in that way. So that's cool. Yeah, man. I think it's uh, the guy's job to chase for sure, um, and. That's why uh, women, they get a little bit easier because they don't have to chase. I think well, well, a woman's well, job well, is... Well, that's, that's, it's reciprocated though, Frankie. Like, like, like the dude has to work on himself so that way the chick chases him, right? And then the chick has to be a catch. That's why the dude is attracted in the first place. He's like, oh man, dude, she's a, she's a prize for sure, you know? But then if she, you know, and, and, if, and if they get married, right? And if she's no longer, you know, this hot, you know, chick or, or she's no longer this big catch, you know what I'm saying? Then it's just kind of like the, the passion dies eventually, you know, the sexual attraction. It's like last week. It's like a, a sexual, the sexual attraction is big, you know, and if you ain't taking care of yourself, ooh, I don't know. I'm just going to stick to jerking off, you know, <laughs> you know, so it's like that, you know, so, so, so if, if we things. fast forward into the relationship, right? Yeah. Let's say that, let's just say that, you know, they do fall in love and, you know, 
it's you know five years in and the guy to for the girl to attract the guy for the guy to attract the girl more if the guy draws in a lot of girls and the jealousy of her comes in like hey no i want to be that girl still yeah. do you think that's a healthy relationship heck yeah dude because he's a catch you know what i'm saying but it's, it's not like he's it's not like he's doing something Right? It's not like he's being flirtatious. It's like other bitches are trying to, you know, fuck up their shit, you know? Because they rec- they even recognize that he's a catch. So, so, but if he can, you know, if he controls himself and, and shit like that, and he ain't reciprocating that same kind of energy outwards, but just to her, then that's, that's, that's definitely healthy. Yeah. How do you feel about um, the man having multiple women and the women only have him? What do you mean? Like dating or, or like, like having multiple like just women, like uh, dating marriage kind of like how um the Hmong culture was like having multiple wives multiple wives yeah multiple wives and the woman just dedicated to, it's in Muslim as well but how do you feel about that well if you can make it work you make it work <laughs> I don't know doc. So let me, let me, let me, let me, let me ask you this. Let's yeah. say that, um, I just, I'm just saying, all right, I'm just saying, don't, don't kill me, don't kill me for this, uh, Baku. Um, uh, <laughs> but let's say that she's like, Hey, um, I'm totally cool with you having another, another girl. Okay. I'm like, Ty, dude, another source of income. <laughs> would you, would you, would you pursue uh... that or would you? No, you're not. I, I have no idea, man. Like, like, um, because like I'm an emotional person, you know, like, like, like to give, you know, to extend my energy to somebody else is exhausting, dude. Like even, like, that's why I like, I cut off so many people, uh, in my life, you know, um, like, like one time on, on Facebook friend, like my, my Facebook friends were like maxed out at five, 5,000, right? That that already yeah. that already was was emotionally draining for me, right? That's how much that's how much of an emotional or empath, right? Uh, that I am is that like that 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 bullshit occupied, you know, my 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 headspace, and then so like for for me to have a, a second wife, I I just don't see it working, just because it it'd be exhausting, and so I can't give a hundred to one, I can only give a hundred to one person, right? Um, so so th- that would just split my effort. To two people, if if I had a, a second wife. So what what would you do if um you know that uh, a, <clears throat> a what's your um tip for uh, a couple that are comfortable are not really sexually active and they are kind of you know sick of each other kind of like everything kind of feels like a nag like what's what's your tip. Other than like, other than the five love language and the therapy, um, like, what's your way to go about it? If uh, uh, you you gotta try stuff, man. I, I think I think uh, in a struggling relationship, That's man, you you gotta just focus on being committed, um, working it out. Because like that's where that's where you grow as a person is is in a place of discomfort, of uh, in a place of massive discomfort, and you come out on top yeah. of that. Yeah. That's that's where you grow, you know. So so I would at least first try, you know, everything in your power to 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 overcome that piece, right? Because who's to say, right? If that's just something that happened in this relationship, and we break up, who's to say that that's not gonna happen in the next relationship? You're gonna give up again. What that happens in the next relationship? That's why, I like, like uh, divorce, like the statistics for divorce, right? If it happens once, it's more likely to happen twice. And if it happened twice, it's like almost damn near guaranteed to happen three times, and then again and again and again, right? So, it, so it's 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 a matter of having a, a mentality of being committed to the relationship and work towards uh, growing together, uh, and then creating a legacy. I think I think that's a, because if there's no future to look forward to in that person then it's easier then it makes sense to just give up on that person right uh or to give up on that relationship because there's no legacy there's no future right and if you have kids right you know with that person um you know there there should be more of an incentive to stay together right because you have kids 
uh, and then and then so you do everything in your power and, and this is right so so assuming that both people you know aren't just dickheads right uh, and this isn't a abusive relationship it's just people being people and and just you know things are complicated right so yeah that's my answer what do you uh what do you see in the toxic relationship what's something that was you say that hey maybe it's really time to go like drawing the line i think um i think uh every person whether you're married dating single right you should always be um paying attention to others people's languages right how they talk to you how they react to you right i think we mentioned this a few times i think this is very important right uh when you're finding friends you know when you share good news are they celebrating with you or are they trying to steal that from you right uh so especially in a relationship right uh, a long-term relationship you know a spouse right or even if you're already married right i think i think it's it's definitely if, if you do share like um deep deep uh, emotions with that person right you should definitely bring it up and then see how they react to even that right if they're if they're willing to work on how they talk right um i, I think that's that's going to be a good piece uh, a what good if person. they change and disrespect you even more when you open up to them uh you just leave them dude <laughs> if but if you're married right then therapy you know what i'm saying I, I think I think you yeah. just try everything and anything in your power to make it work and 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 this is why like the the dating phase is so important. This is why even even before the dating phase, I would even say is just work on you, and then at the same time you make friends, you meet people along the way, and then you just kind of uh, filtering people out in and out, right? You know, th this person you know celebrates me. Uh, this person you know. Um, always trying to find any way to degrade me, right? Weed them out, and then and so you're 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 collecting people, right? Um, and then in the, in that group of collection, right? You you you'll find your spouse, maybe, right? So I think um, instead of waiting till you get married and then find out what a dickhead they are, and then you get divorced, and then you know all that bullshit, you know. So um let's go ahead and uh, move on to the the next segment because i think we kind of went over time uh i think jimmy might be coming on soon here oh, shit. uh you want to go on one of your i think i told him 642 so i sh i'll message him right now okay uh, uh we can do 640. my my video now yeah let's go your video ty i think you'll like this i think you'll like this a lot okay let's see here bam here we go Ready? Yeah, let's play. My friends are men. I don't have female friends. I don't. Oh, this one. Okay. Why? What do you mean? Well, because you know, come on. Because you have a wife. Well, I have a wife, and I don't. I don't really have female friends because look. Okay, let's get rid of this <laughs> myth right here. Why. Okay, I'm gonna okay. tell you this. Let's get rid of this right here. There, you, you're an attractive woman. There's some guy somewhere saying, "Yeah, I'm. We're friends." That's not true. He's your friend only because you have made it absolutely clear that nothing else is happening except this friendship we have. We remain your friends in hopes that one day there'll be a crack in the door, a chink in the armor, and trust and believe that guy that you think is just your buddy, he will slide in that crack <laughs> the moment he gets the opportunity. Because we're God. Men think this way? Uh, 99.9% of us think that way. Ah, dog. Could you hear that? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen this before. Um, I, I mean, I have a lot of female friends. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough because, like, uh, it's either, like, s sister or... A friend, you know, kind of what Steve said, you know, a friend that you hope, you know, maybe they'll let you slide in one day. But I do have friends that I consider, like, sisters, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, you know, no sexual attraction, just, like, talk, having a good time. Uh, but we don't see each other, like, often, like, maybe once a month, twice, you know, on, on the holidays. But we, we, we... 
in your, in your, in your past relationships, uh, did your your girlfriend know how much female friends you had, or was she aware of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She uh, she didn't like it, man. She was she was, she was kind of insecure about <clears throat> herself. Well, not okay. I won't say insecure, but she was always uh, jealous about um, you know. Hey, man, because you were situations. Catch. You were catch. That's why I mean. If, if I was good. But I, but I also think that is why she was so in love with me because she always thought that I was gonna like run away or like somebody else was gonna get me, you know. Sweet. So she was always on her on her own toes, you know. Yeah. And like she'd be saying stuff like I don't I don't explain myself. I don't need to explain myself. I was like, oh, it's just it's just a job. Like I don't know, I'll go out and shoot uh, videos, um, on visuals and stuff, and. The girl, my girl, be like, "Oh man, you, 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 are you sleeping with her? You messing with her?" Cause she knows, like, whenever I do drink, I get, you know, very talkative. Yeah, I'm just really friendly. I consider myself friendly whenever I drink, but she thinks that it's too friendly. Also, when you're sober too, you're friendly. <laughs> yeah, but you, you right, exactly, you, right. And and then you just a little but, bit more friendly. That's all. <laughs> Okay. She don't like when I drink at all, man. When I drink, like she she gets me attitude. Like she's like, you're too touchy, you're too talkative. <laughs> like she hates that. She hates that. But I also feel like that was kind of something that um, that I liked, man. I like being, um, you know, being that extrovert, huh? A stud. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's that. Yeah, I love it, dude. I love just like talking, bro, and. I don't do that enough whenever I am sober, you know. It it, it sucks to say, <laughs> yeah, but, you yeah, know, yeah. I need it a, sucks to say. I need to get rid of this frontal lobe real quick. <laughs> give yeah. Me, give me four um, shots, dog. You hear that, dude. <laughs> it sucks because, like, uh, it, it doesn't really suck, but it's kind of a struggle right now because, like, I'm on a path of not drinking. Sweet. I mean, I have drank before, like, maybe, like, Two three weeks ago, um, and I had like this liver panic attack. Oh, damn. After that, dude, um, I decided not to drink anymore. So I'm I'm on this path of uh, sobriety for the next we ninety days. We can't we can't drink like we used to, man. We can't drink like we used to, dude. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, but let, let me tell you this, dude. Let me tell you this. Whenever I did drink, right, <laughs> I was at I was at the the uh, the festival, and um. This lady came up, bro. Like, I looked up, and, like, the love of my life just kind of like, oh, I was like, holy shit. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What do I do? <laughs> so, um, the interaction kind of went kind of, like, I was so sober, too sober for this. <laughs> and uh, she was, she was kind of in the middle of, like, you know, the line. I, I didn't know if she was in line or she was out of line. So, I was like, I was like, where's the line? And she was like, oh, this is the line. Like, oh, okay, cool. So, we... We kind of went behind her, and I was like, "Oh, so now you're cutting in front of us." And she was, and then she got kind of upset and kind of like said something. She was like, "Well, you guys are short, something like that." And I was like, "Whoa!" I was like, "Where did that come from?" I was like, "Shit, man, relax." Like, I was just so brain farted because like, I haven't flirted with a with a new with a girl in, in like forever, a new girl in forever. Yeah. And I wasn't drunk, you know. The drunk Frankie wouldn't know exactly what to do. You wouldn't know what to say, what to do. Yeah. <laughs> but I was just so stunned. I was like, oh, man, I'm too sober for this, oh, man. man. It's great, man. I, I love the uh, the tipsy uh, Frankie, dude, man. That's hilarious. But my, my girl made me hate my, my girl made me hate it to uh, hide that shit. So, um, you know, deuces to her. <laughs> my ex-girl, I would say. If you're listening to this, it's all your fault. <laughs> yeah. I'm boring now. That is why I'm boring. I'm not going to get any girls until I drink again. Um, oh, no, that's funny, dog. <laughs> you want to go and go to the next one? Uh, actually, actually, I, I had another question, right? Is, uh, is, yeah. is that... Is that um, because we only got like four minutes left, right? Yeah. Let's just stick with this segment. Yeah. Okay. So, so my follow-up question is like, is is uh, in your future relationship, is that going to be important to you to have um, female friends, or, or you know, your female friends from from before, you know, the uh, the love interest happened, right? Is that going to be important for you to have around? Because like, 
I tell you, for me, I don't have female friends. Um, just because Paku can't handle it. <laughs> So I, you know, happy wife, happy life, right? So, so my question to you, right, is, 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 are you gonna still have female friends too? Oh, uh, it depends, um, because most of my female friends are, you know, part of what I'm trying to do. You know, yeah. they're either um, business a woman. Um, it's more of a business relationship, I guess. Yeah. Rather than uh, in a networking relationship. Versus like a casual friend. I'm gonna fuck you one day, but if they let me, <laughs> I'm just saying. If one night we like, hey, you wanna go out and we just end up being at your house and like, I just need some quick dick, Frankie. Come on, <laughs> I'm on my way. Uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Uh, even at that point, I still wouldn't do that, dude. Because I don't know, man. Like, I I feel bad, man. Like. There's so many times that I fucked myself over because a woman was drinking and she was drunk and we wanted to have sex, oh, but yeah, I didn't yeah. have sex good, good, because, good. because you know, like I just didn't feel like right doing it. Um, I've always been like that. I've, I've screwed up many times, bro. To be like three times I fucked up from not doing it because a girl was, was in toxic. Um, I'm telling you, man, I'm a good dude, bro. I'm a good dude, like. Good man. But there are times that I have done it when they were in to they were toxic too. So. Okay. So I'm not I'm not much of a good dude too. It's all consensual as long as it's all consensual. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. It's consensual. Uh, Both parties are intoxicated. Both wanted to fuck. Everything's good, yeah. dog. Legally, everything's good. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Facts, Tom. Facts, uh, facts. That's funny. I think. I think. Um, I think what you mentioned is very important, right? Casual friends, uh, like like the the women friend that I had in the past were were casual friends, good friends, right? But uh, you know, I've I've since I've since kind of you know um, haven't communicated with those friends, right? And so in terms of work friends, that's that's all of the acquaintances that I that I do have, um, female wise, right? So so I think that's. Okay, yeah. Even uh, even right now, like I have um, I have dinners with uh, with a friend of mine, uh, and she's an actress. We kind of, kind of just talk about uh, you know uh, personal growth and how how we're doing, how she's doing, and things like that. You know, um, yeah. So it's just casual. Especially, well, well, it's it's cool that it's casual too, right? But but you you guys are still kind of. In the same industry, right? The entertainment industry. So then, yeah, yeah. that's where networking does make sense, you know. Uh, and having those, yeah. you know, um, authentic relationships do make sense, right? So, yeah. But. Um, but I do have a lot of gay friends too. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So um, a lot of gay friends. They uh, I I track a lot of gays, man, and I love the gays, bro. They uh. They're actually really nice. Gay people are nice. They they're people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just like, they, uh, like sucking dick. You know what I'm saying? That's that's all. That's the only thing. That's the only difference, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Every time it's just funny because like when I do see them, I do ask ask them like like gay questions yeah. just for like the fun of it. Yeah. Like, would you suck that guy's dick? Would you suck that guy's dick? How how big do you think that guy's dick is? Yeah. And like it's just like dick things. Over the place, where like they don't care, they love talking about it. Yeah, you know, and not that I like talking about it, but it's it's just um, something to. Well, it's because it's a different perspective. Uh, yeah, I get it, man. Yeah, yeah, into yeah. Pussy, 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 yeah. pussy. And then so when you ask me, kitty cat, kitty catty, kitty cat, kitty cat, cat. <laughs> uh, let me see. Let me see if uh, Jimmy. We, we, we can, we can <laughs> say dick, but we can't say pussy. What the fuck kind of world we live in, dude? <laughs> <laughs> let me uh let me invite uh does dick Jimmy have a, a, a animal oh. name uh, i'm not sure but philip is on what's up philip what's up chat where's your where's your webcam at man oh, oh. Um, he just he just i thought that was jimmy timmy um, up, dude, I don't see Jimmy on this. Where's your, uh, your mic's not working, Philip? 
Oh, okay, now it is. Okay. Get closer to the mic. Get closer to the mic. Yo. What's up? I just came in and I listened on you guys. You So you like you like what you hear, eh? No, you just started talking about dicks. And I was like, ooh. This, yeah. this guy is, man. Yeah, he's about to man. They trust a lot of guys. <laughs> we're, we're a diverse... <laughs> We're a diverse podcast. We're a diverse live stream. You know what I'm saying? We're we're trying to we're trying to be like Bud Light and start extending outward to to a market. We- <laughs> I guess. So let me ask you this, Philip. Do you do you like talking about uh, dicks? <laughs> um, when I'm making jokes, yeah. <laughs> give, give me give me a good dick joke. Uh, no, it always like it has to fly off the top of my head. What well, Philip likes to do, what well, Philip, well, Philip likes to do is he likes to haze. <laughs> he likes to haze. He likes to bully and yeah, harass. Love, that's what. That's what, when he says joke. That's what he's doing. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, I like to bully. <laughs> he likes to be big brother. Oh yeah. Like um, I call Victor. What do I call Victor? <laughs> so he's got so much things he calls Victor. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, there's so many things. But I call. I started calling him the Lizzie Goblin. Oh, that's hilarious! That's hilarious. Cool. Well, I have a new nickname for him. I just forgot it. Hey, what do you think about um, uh, in a relationship? Right. So let's say you're in a relationship and is 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 space, right? Is time away from your significant other uh, healthy? Like, I, yes, it is healthy. It's oh, very wow. healthy. You want to elaborate? Like, like having a boys' day or something like that, like a vacation with just the boys. Or, yeah. You know, I think it's very healthy that people do that. Sweet, that's cool, man. All right. Well, all right. Well, well, okay. My next question, right? Is it uh, uh, is it okay for uh? So let's say you're in a relationship, right? Is it okay for you to still maintain your friendship with uh, female friends? So, if you're in a relationship, yeah, just dating or like yeah, let's say dating. You're you're dating, and then uh, your your significant other, right? She don't like you having you know female friends. It just depends. Okay, you want to you want to elaborate? I think it was, like. I have three more friends, and they'll, sometimes they'll just always be a few more friends, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, if you're dating and she feels some type of way about it, it depends on if you see yourself with that person, you know? Okay, so let's What say- if she's really... What if she's, like, always on your side and she won't let you leave at all? Red flags, bro. <laughs> huh? you, that's red flags right there. Like, red red flags. Be with someone... that's red of... flags. Yeah, you shouldn't be with somebody that smothers you. You know. Yeah. I think yeah. space is really good for a relationship. A lot of the reason why, like, people don't Don't succeed in you know having a relationship is because they don't give space. They always smother in the beginning of the relationship and then it dies out. You know, you always have to keep the fire lit. You know. Yeah, I like that. That's that's actually what we uh briefly touched on is is the the chase, right? So I think uh, I, f- I forgot one of your questions, Frankie, but it was like um when we were talking about like pursuing each other, right? Uh, what was that question again? Pursuing each other? Yeah, where like the chick is. Um, oh, know. um, she has to always chase. Uh, so the guy has to kind of play games a little bit and kind of not be also be hard to get, but also kind of uh, keep the distance and then you know, kind of play. Yeah, you, know, you know, like that, like a cat, right? When you play the cat, you don't just give the cat the toy because the cat's gonna be like, oh, I don't, I don't want to play no more. But you kind of have to wiggle and. Back and forth. That's just basically how the game has to be played with women to keep to keep them around is to keep yourself mysterious and v- keep your value from the distance. I, yeah, I mean that's like a singles thing, 
you know. The chasing, chasing. Yeah, well, yeah, that's like for being single, all right? Well, 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 well I, I would even argue, right, with, uh, like, even in the dating and in marriage phase, you should be uh, pursuing each other, right? So not necessarily, like, talking to other, you know, women and, and, and being flirtatious outside of, you know, re your relationship, but... But uh, what I was saying before you got on was um, being the catch, right? Uh, pursuing the prize always, right? So like, like um, you know, when you're single, you're, you're chasing women uh, because, you know, uh, initially they attract you and then once you get to know them, oh, this person can be, you know, um, a high value person in my, uh, in, in my life, right? A potential wife. And, and, and so you pursue, okay, here we go. Jimmy's on. Oh, what is up? This is how you get on. Sorry, I was waiting. I was like, man, I don't, I don't see anything. Um, Philip and Peter, this is our guest Jimmy today. And uh, Jimmy, can you, uh, can you kind of just talk about, uh, introduce yourself to the, to the crowd? Wait, wait, Jimmy, you, you got a, you got a webcam? You said I got a what? Webcam. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, Rockham, the audience wants to see you. Hold on one second. I didn't know I was going to be on camera today. Let me put on a hat real quick. My hair's kind of messy. <laughs> I brought a hat just in case. Perfect. In case. Uh, there, what is up? Yeah, me. Tight. Tight. Dang, man, you looking young, dog. Looking sexy. Uh, <laughs> thanks, man, thanks. <laughs> What's up? How you guys doing? Pretty good. Uh, well, good man. Um, good to see you, man. Um, so what? Uh, what's something you're passionate about? Introduce yourself. Name. Something that you do. Man, my name is Jimmy. Jimmy Chang. I am passionate about music. I love to sing, and uh, I, I've been doing a lot of things. By by trade, I just, by trade, I'm a I have a economics background and a minor in theater, so it ranges anywhere from business econ to acting. I've dabbled a lot with a lot of things, you know. Worked in finance. I've uh, did a little entrepreneurship, uh, start a small business, and then was in commercial real estate. As well as uh, uh, after commercial real estate, went into acting. This is how me and Frankie met. Okay. And then after acting, started a YouTube channel for some music. And then started a digital marketing business in 2020. And now I'm full back circle in uh, movies again. You know, so uh, got my hands full. Yeah. Okay. That's cool, man. What's something that you learned this year that you like that you want to share with people? Man, like uh, something I've learned this year. I've learned, you know, on the faith side, I gave myself to Christ, uh, you know, very seriously about three years ago. And what I learned is if you just completely trust what Christ has for you, He's got the best life for you, man. And uh, and all his promises are real. They still hold true. Like in a flip of a finger, blessings will come down and he elevates you when the time is right. I just came back from uh, a three months, um, I don't know what you call it, work, vacation in Europe. And let me tell you, over there, the connections I've made, the, the, the miracles I've seen, like my faith is so reaffirmed right now that there is there is a higher power and there is nothing but a truer religion than Christianity, man. And I've learned that if you just trust, put your faith in God, everything else will come along. Everything else is going to fall into place, man. Trust the process that you are in right now. And there, there's always a lesson to be learned where you're at right now in life. That's how you do. That's real cool. So, like, whenever you say give yourself to to, to Christ, like, you know, like, what, 
like how do you go about it like how do you give yourself and how do you see these signs and like how do you do you see signs do you like, how does it go about how do you go about it man like i started going to church because i was chasing a girl man it was all because of fun and girls in the beginning and then uh I, you know things started oh, changing man. i started going a little bit more <laughs> And then I'm like, you know, there's something here, man. Like, this is like singing these songs made me want to cry, dude. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then I started going more and more and more. And then uh, it wasn't until like 2015, I met this girl, my ex-girlfriend. She was telling me like, man, I could hear God. I'm like, man, BS. Show me, <laughs> prove to me. Like, <laughs> and then she started, she started telling me like things that... Um, like actually came true i tested her on everything i'm like wow like seriously and then because of her i started like curious like okay you know teach me teach me how to uh <laughs> give me some of that too i want a little crystal ball that i you know and then uh that's when i started seeking a little bit more and then well, uh, how, 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 i thought you just kind of skipped uh like the whole segment there. how did that happen like what give us an example of like how she saw Christ and how she gave it to you. What, what, what's the example? The example, one of the biggest example was she. She's like, "Hey, look, I know you're struggling with your job. I prayed for you. God wants you to go into commercial real estate." And then I was like, "Man, I don't want to go into commercial real estate. I want to go into finance. I want to go to New York. I want to work on Wall Street. I want to make a ton of load of money. Like that's what I want to do. I don't want to go into commercial real estate." And she's like, well, I prayed for you. Like, that's what God told me. I'm like, well, okay, then. I don't care. I don't care what God told you. I want to do what I want. Yeah. Like, and then uh, it took me about three, three and a half months, four months to come around. I was, I was jobless. I was carless. And I was at home just straight up, like, applying for jobs. I applied for over, like, 300 finance, financial analyst jobs. Wow. And uh, I only got five interviews. And... That's not normal because I have a I have a pretty good resume. I have the same internships. I have the same research experiences with with all my all, all my peers at uh, in college, and all of them had um, all of them got offers at big banks making six figures their first year of college. And I was like, why not me? You know, I had this question like, why not me? We have the same resume. We have the same experiences. Like, what the heck? Uh, I didn't believe like. I knew what I was capable of. I, I was pretty competent of confident in my own competence. Um, and, uh, after she's after three, four months of applying to 300 plus positions, she's like, well, like, do you want to try? Like, let's just go to, uh, you know, let's just go to downtown. See, see, uh, let's just go walk around downtown. And she's like, well, look at this. Where would you want to work? I was like, look, this building, this building, this building. I want to work here. This is downtown LA. And she's like, okay, let's go to, uh, let's just, let's just pray, pray for, pray about it. You want to work here? Look, just test what I'm saying. She said one day, test what I'm saying. And then I was like, okay, how do I do that? She's like, be very specific. Be to specific to the point that you can't mistake and that is God. Every prayer that you, you want to ask for, be very specific so that you know it's Him. I'm like, okay, sure. Uh, all right, God, if you're real, <laughs> let it, if you want me to go into commercial real estate, let it be the first position that I apply to that I get. <laughs> and then... <laughs> I did not think this was going to happen, but it did. I awesome. was like, holy crap. Like, awesome. Yeah. Like, I applied to the first position in a commercial real estate firm, and I got it. But the thing is, when I got into the firm, I was like, man, nah, this is BS because <laughs> they take on everybody, you know? <laughs> they were taking everybody. So I didn't feel that special. I was like, nah, you BS. And then uh, after my training over there, I somehow got switched to a bigger firm. It was like the biggest commercial real estate firm. And then that's when I knew like, oh, snap, like this was not me. 
I think this was supposed to happen this way. And then uh, I started believing her then. There was another car situation that she told me about. She's like, hey, look, you should uh, you should get a new car. I'm like, I don't I don't have money. How am I going to get a new car? Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. How the heck am I? I remember fighting with her. Like, I was like, <laughs> how the heck am I going to get a new car? That makes no like, sense, woman. Get your car. I can't just yeah. grab one you know, out of thin air and, you know, it, it requires yeah. money. <laughs> Yeah, like I was straight up like and then uh he's like I think your I think your dad's going to co-sign for you. Oh nice. Wow. And me and my dad didn't get along. Like we still kind of like bump heads sometimes. And then all of a sudden he's like, "Hey, uh do you want me to just co-sign for you?" And I was like, "What?" <laughs> like, "What? She just said this like 2 days ago." And I was She's like, got a hex on you or something, dude. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, those were... Uh, there were other, like, smaller things, but, um, but yeah, those were kind of, like, the two major ones. The the job one, that was, like, a major one for me. Um, and then I started seeking, you know. I started, like... I didn't really believe, but I it got my interest, and then I started testing God on everything. I started testing him on everything. All right, if you're real, do this for me. Do that for me. And then, uh, yeah, I think he came through every time, man. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, didn't mean to have this faith talk on you guys, but that's kind of what I'm learning this year. That's awesome, dude. Well, you, you, you answered the question, man, and that's what we were looking for, dude. Appreciate it. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah so. You got uh, anything else, Frankie? Um, I'm I'm still looking for uh, for Christ too, man. Um, I I think I'm gonna I'm gonna take this to consideration and and, and pray about it and and see if a Lamborghini <laughs> <laughs> appears in my front door. Be be very specific and uh... yeah, Lamborghini, 2016. <laughs> hey, and then uh, you know right, a right. secret, dude. You, you know. We, uh, I don't know. Is, is this like a rated R uh, podcast right here? Yes. Anything goes very, or what? Well, if you if you were tuning in, yes, we're, this was very uh, this was very rated R. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because hey, this, you know, Brady, this guy, Brady, this guy. You know, we like to party, right? You know, we go pretty hard sometimes, right? Sometimes, yeah, and yeah. I know you're spiritual too. So sometimes when we're partying, yo, like. That spiritual connection is is like more sensitive, man. If you know what I'm saying. Interesting. What do you mean by that? Like you know, if we're like under the substances, or yeah. Stuff, man, yeah, 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 yeah. It's too sensitive for for who, for what? Um, uh, are you are you guys sure anything goes on this podcast or? Yeah, you, you just can't really say the word grape. The runs were great. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's too much. It. Um, yeah, that's the only thing uh, we don't talk about. <laughs> but yeah, you know, like some some psilocybin or you know some uh, some you know THC. Uh, this all connects you to the. Uh, this all opens you up to the spiritual realm, right? So, okay. and that's why they call it like getting high because you're you're kind of getting attached to the uh, the higher power is why they, they call it getting hot because you're like in tune with the higher power when you're actually under the influence you're open you're open yourself up spiritually to uh communication with the spirit world interesting yeah um okay i i do i do believe in that and and um i think i um uh, for me personally, I think I've experienced it enough to where um, I need to, uh, you know, practice my being sober. Do, do, sober? It, do it sober. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. I, I, yeah, yeah. I agree with you, but I, uh, I have nothing against like, it though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I actually, I love, I love getting, getting high, man. That's, <laughs> a, that's, that's my thing, dude. Like, but I think I start to rely on it too much, and then yeah. kind of, you know, messed up my life a little bit. And I feel like I just wasn't taking accountability for myself. Yeah. And, yeah, no, um, that's, that's good. 
so yeah dude um but yeah i, I know what you mean though uh, i've taken some psychedelics before too and it's <laughs> yeah. taken me to uh, a nice room to kind of yeah. open up some doors um i like it uh but i i won't be able to do it um like frequently or, or on a consistent base yeah no like it, those substances actually open you to the negative spiritual side of things you know mm. but i'm just saying like in general it should make you a little bit more sensitive to the the spiritual world yeah 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 so uh, Frankie, you, um uh, you got other questions man um somewhat um <clears throat> i wanted to ask uh AJB, are, you, are you red pill or blue pill i'm red man red all the way baby you red pill yeah what's red your what's your perspective on that what what's your perspective on that on red pill um can you define it for me? Because uh, I, I kind of know the general ideas, but I don't know like the specific definition. Okay. Um. Man, honestly, man, I don't. I don't really know it too bad. I just saw people talking about it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but what, what, I, what I think red, red pill is red pill is more for uh like you know for the future for for men like being masculine men. And like more dominant, blue pill is more equalized and more like um, you know nine to five um, basic yeah. guys. I want to say, yeah, um, you know, I I do have a problem with the the media trying to portray men as as weak, right? I feel like the natural order of things, the woman should follow the men. Um, and that's just the natural way of things. Men should be protecting and providing. That's just the way we're built. Women are built to nurture, you know, uh, child rear. And, and I feel like that's innately, I believe, we're created that way naturally. So, that's true. Um, yeah, and I, and I feel like the society is so kind of conditioned to believe especially like the feminist movement and i feel like that's why feminists are so unhappy these days because they're going against their their natural created uh, i don't know what do you call this uh, their natural I would guess. yeah this this kind of going against what, what we're created for yeah and, like this, this feminism. I, you know, okay, sure. I believe in woman empowerment to a certain extent, but to, to say, oh, you know what, men and women are the same. Like, let's say the uh, the trans. Uh, oh, I'm gonna interrupt real quick, Jimmy. Uh, hey, Frankie, I'm I'm getting a uh, echo on your part. I can I can hear my part. Yeah, so I hear Jimmy fine, but now I think the echo is coming from you. Hello, 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 hello. Okay. Okay, yeah. I kind of hear. Oh, uh, no more echo for me. Okay, yeah. Okay. You want to you continue your thought, Jimmy? So, um, yeah, so I... Uh, like, seeing all the trans athletes, I think, what, the male uh, transition to female, and they try to compete in the female uh, athletic world, like, I have a problem with that. Because they're just, even though they're uh, biological male who transition into women, their bone density is still harder. They still have bigger, uh, more lung capacity. They still have more uh, muscle density. And they're trying to compete in the, the women's force. And then they're smashing all the women's records. Yeah, yeah. Like... This is not normal. There's, you know? there's, a, there's a power lifter who was trolling, you know, who, who 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 took advantage of that, right? He was just he didn't yeah. he didn't make a, an effort at all to to look like a woman, uh, or, or to look feminine, right? And he was just he he uh, I think it was a bench press competition or something like that, and he just yeah, blew, yeah. blew the record out of the park. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was and it's like, like and I just feel like, man, have we uh, 
been degraded as a society that much to think that this is okay or you know like i'm i'm okay with with you know the lgbt community and i have a lot of of, of gay friends as well so that is no problem for me yeah but to start like mixing the lines or uh you know like i don't know i don't know if that answers the the red pill question i i do believe that women should be feminine and men should be masculine that's just the way this we're, we're naturally built for and um, i think that's why there's so many unhappy people these days man because we're we've been like twisted upside down women are becoming more masculine and then like men are becoming more feminine no the the women aren't respecting the men and then the men are are seeking elsewhere like there's a i don't know if you guys know of like about the passport guys you know like passport guys are, are go, going elsewhere to to find wives like american yeah. women are are uh, are in it for they're going to in it for a freaking reality check man american women are so entitled i agree man um you know i i think one of the i guess part of the part of the mental health crisis right is is just that like like our society is is you know so dope we gotta we gotta create problems you know and and that's where i think some of these problems are kind of arising is just you know i i feel a certain way so i'm gonna you know blow it out of proportion and and i think it's just the luxury of so many choices or too many choices and and nothing set in stone and 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 so i think i think that plays a part of um just kind of where we're at today as a society yeah that that and uh and and i have friends that kind of are like that too like they're very uh entitled and and very uh confrontational <laughs> like them spicy latinas man <laughs> they are freaking spicy dude oh yeah they're I'm, so, I'm they're friend, so yeah. freaking prideful man like yeah. i don't need no man to buy my food <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah man like those are gonna be the single ones they're gonna they're gonna have the hard time yeah by the time they realize it, it's gonna be too late man they're gonna be uh 40 years old 45 and they're yeah. still gonna wonder why and they're still gonna think that they're tens and they're yeah. competing against these 20 year olds and they're gonna have they're gonna own cats and i'm telling you man <laughs> invest, invest in cat food, in cat food bro <laughs> Because oh, it's already happening. It's already happening uh, here in, in LA. You've seen most LA girls here, man. They're they're getting yeah, older. They're all, they're all unhappy, man. Everybody, uh, all of them are yeah. all of them are trash. All of them are single. And you know, after being in Europe, man, like women are still like traditional over there, dude. I'm like, dude, why? And I'm getting so much play there. Like, why would I even still come back and give give these freaking entitled american woman attention like like yo we should all move to freaking europe man like, Shit, i'm going to russia then huh Shit. <laughs> shoot america is going down the drain man for real yeah like for real for real yeah as in relationship wise yeah i can see a lot of um that's kind of why um this podcast is here too because it's a lot about mental health and a lot of asian men specifically are lonelier than than ever and uh, committing suicide in the most other race because yeah. of the future of the western society and the traditional side that we have uh, as uh, as the culture and um yeah. yeah dude these we're getting lonelier man these dudes are getting lonelier um you know of uh, models are getting more money um yeah. You, the crazy thing is this too. Uh, I mean, I I used to, used to I used to manage one of my girls and like, dude, man, these dudes are just talking to dudes. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, really? The uh, wait, like the dudes are responding to uh, the me. <laughs> oh, man. Man, Frankie's Dang. got game, dude. Frankie's got uh, game, that's, dude. That's really it, bro. Yeah, yeah the just... ultimate. Yeah, man. To Damn. me, or even Chat GPT, man. That's all there is to it, bro. <laughs> oh, Chat GPT. Dang. Um, yeah, it, no. it is a scam, dude. Um, yeah. But honestly, uh, 
you know, like, we have to look at the bright side that we're actually kind of saving lives, right? Like Andrew Tate said, right? These guys are getting less lonely. They, they you know, they're whacking off. They, they're coming. They're looking forward to, um, you know, your text or your picture. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, man, it's, it's a business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, that simping culture, though, is the uh, OF is creating way more simps, man. <laughs> But man, uh, I mean, yeah, that's true, man. That's true. <laughs> yeah, porn yeah. But is porn market. is free. Porn is free, people. <laughs> <laughs> so Wait, that's, what is I think, what he, is free? He, he said porn is free. <laughs> uh, you might keep a cutting on off. Uh, Peter, Peter. Oh yeah, it does, man. My bad, dude. Oh uh, yeah. I think I think OF is uh, it's just uh, another connection, a human connection. So like I read this article too, is that men we like to have uh, you know intimacy because that's one of the ways for us to feel loved. You know, like we feel loved because we have that intimacy. But other than that, like we had a feeling, really talk about our feelings. Um, yeah, but it's tough. It's tough for for a guy. Yeah, that's true, man. I feel like, especially for Asians, like we're we're kind of invisible to the, uh, you know. I think we've been dating like, community, yeah, uh, yeah. Like we've been painted in such a negative light in the Western media. Like it's it's kind of. I feel like they they do that on purpose, though. Oh, for sure, for sure. It's all competition. Yeah. Cause like yeah. a guy to guy is competition. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, for sure. No. Like, we don't even get love from the Asian girls anymore, you know? I mean, we still do, but you know what I'm I'm saying. Like, I'm so, over, yeah. overgeneralizing. I think there's um, there's two cultures that we can kind of differentiate, like the, the hookup culture versus yeah. the hubby culture, right? Because yeah. are you trying to just find this guy to, you know, have, have a good time? Or are you trying to find a guy that's going to, you know, eventually be your husband? Right. Yeah. But I think for girls too, like sex is so important for them. Uh, it's kind of like you know, make it. You know, you're really good at sex, and I want to be with you, or you're just not good at sex, and I don't want to be with you. You know. And I've talked to many women too. Uh, I know that size is one of the issues that they love bringing up. By then, they do actually. We have the average size penis, and it's not about the size. Most. Most women would say it's not about the size; it's about the ocean. Was it the ocean? The, the motion, motion, motion in the ocean. <laughs> the motion in the, the ocean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, that I, that I believe is a myth too. I agree with you though. You know, I've been told like, "Hey, my size is good." You know, it is not. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I've been told like by Asian girls. They've been with like, uh, like Middle Eastern guys, and then like, oh my god, like that thing is so big, like it freaking hurts. It's not even enjoyable, you know. <laughs> I, I, so, I, I had an ex who, who said that too. <laughs> I feel like that's just like that's such a myth that the the Western society is trying to push upon freaking us Asian men. Like that's BS, man. Yeah, like. Like you said, it's the motion and ocean, and I think it's the connection too. Like, if you have that 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 spiritual intellectual connection with the with your partner, I feel like the the sex would naturally be you know it'd be okay, it'd be good. Okay means like great. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but man, I feel like. Yeah, are we still still on topic here? Because I feel like we're just kind yeah, of man. Uh, it actually goes. It actually goes on to the next topic, dude. Um, how big is your dick? <laughs> man, it's average. <laughs> what size? What size is average? Tell, tell me when. Uh, to, tell uh, me when to stop. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not the same. Tell me to stop, right? It's not the same. Are you serious? I, 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 let's just say I, I'm happy. Oh, it's I'm mistake, happy. Mistake. It gets yeah. the job done. How about that, Frankie? You like that answer? It, yeah, the job it done. gets the job done. Like, no, I'm, I'm happy. I'm satisfied. Like, it's good. Like, 
I still get a freaking rock hard erection. I can make females go. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm good. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a 4.5 yeah, okay. on Yelp. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you guys hear me? Did I cut out or? Yeah, you, you had cut off oh, again. Okay. I said again. I said I'm a 4.5 on Yelp. <laughs> nah, I'm a little little bigger than that. <laughs> I'm happy though. Yeah. I'm not like ashamed of, uh, yeah. That's cool, man. All right. Um, moving on. Last question, man. Um, I don't want to ask more questions, but I'm going to be watching these, uh, we'll be watching these podcasts. Do you have like 10,000 people on here live? Uh, we regularly have about average, what, 700 viewers overall. Wow. 700 average. Um, but um, I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you this last question, brother. Uh, how do you flirt with a woman, and what is your riz? Riz. Oh man, my riz is just man. Honesty. What? My game. My game is honesty. Oh okay. Ooh okay. Like it, it's being straight up. I feel like women, women like that straight upness. You know. And, and me, like, like I have a philosophy that I will not approach a woman unless I really, really, like, want her. And I think women can feel that. Like, if you really want them, you would try anything to get them. And I think they like that feeling. And uh, I, I won't approach girls unless I have that that really strong desire that uh, that that attraction it's weird because some females it's just like a physical thing i think they're pretty to look at but there's no like a uh, sexual arousal or uh, intellectual connection i have to have like all three attractions in order for me to want to to chase after them the physical side the sexual side and the intellectual side Sweet. Interesting. How would you? Uh, was there a time that you approached a girl like recently? Like, give us, give us a example. Man, I have not actually. Like, uh, there was, there was one incident in uh, Paris. I hesitated a little bit too long, and then when I went back, she was gone. Like, it was at a market. I was, I was with the. Uh, uh, acquaintance and his mom so I didn't know what to do I was like oh my god I need to talk to her but like it was uh, <laughs> the situation. I waited until we, we, we left we came out and I told him like hey hold up real quick I'll be right <laughs> yeah, back yeah, 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 I gotta yeah. go I gotta go talk to this girl man she was <sighs> she was too uh, yeah she was too uh she was. I have a very particular taste too. I like the uh, woman with no no makeup, the natural beauty type, like no no fake nails, uh, everything natural, and then like the well raised type, like the ones that have inner beauty with manners too. Like uh, I feel like there was a lot of those in in Europe, man. Like surprisingly, uh, I think people are a little bit more well raised in in Europe. So, uh, Europe was overall, uh, you know, made a really good impression on me. I feel like coming back here, American women are, are rowdy, man. They're savages out here, dude. They would, uh, they would get with you and they would freaking <laughs> cheat on you with your best friend. Like, females here. Yeah. 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 They're just, just slanging that, that pussy around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Open, open, man. Door, open door policy, baby. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Yeah. yeah. But uh but I wish I did it more. The last one I saw that I did want to approach, um, it was this past weekend. Um, but when I looked up again, it was uh some USC girl celebrating her graduation in Hollywood and I was like, wow, I never thought I'd be attracted to someone at a bar. And she got my attention at a bar. I never, 
I don't believe in uh, meeting people at a bar, but she was different. I know she was different. Cool. I think the, the USC thing kind of made her stood out too, you know. Like, I know she came from a well-raised family. She's probably daddy's little girl and come from a rich family. Sweet. Yeah, so she was well-raised. Um, yeah, that one, I I was going to approach her, but she left. She left before I could actually even get settled. But with her, I would have just told her, like, hey, I didn't think I would be attracted to anybody at a bar. Like, what is that? What is your name? You know, start talking to her that way. And, uh, yeah, I feel like if if they don't receive it, then, oh, well, you know, yeah. on to the next. Yep. Yeah, but, but my thing is kind of honesty, though. I feel like honesty works for me. Awesome, dude. Good tip for the young boys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna give that to a test, bro. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, when I want to go out. I'm gonna keep that in mind. And if it doesn't work, man. Yeah. For yeah. Now, I know why you're yeah. 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 action, Frank. I've seen you in action. You got game, Frank. You got game. <laughs> hey, that was that was two that was two years ago, man. That was different. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, yeah, hey. two years ago. I know if we still go out, it would still be just the same. Trust me, man. It would still be the oh, same. Man. I hope so. <laughs> maybe maybe three bears in. <laughs> three shots in. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, no, um, it's, been, it's been too long, man. It's been too long. Yeah, it has, it has been it's a while. Yeah. Uh, Pete, did you have any questions you want to ask Jimmy? Um... No, I, I think you covered um, real good questions, man. Yeah, thanks, thanks for uh, thanks for hopping on the uh, the live stream, Jimmy. Man, thank you guys for having me, man. This was fun. Yeah, Jimmy, man, it's it a pleasure to have you on board with us, man. Uh, to know your insights, know your story, your storyline, uh, what you're going through, your tips. Um, it's it's awesome, man. And um, thanks thanks for being on, bro. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you guys for having me, though, for real. For sure, man. Hopefully, we'll get you again next week or, or uh, next time. Um, we won't we'll be doing a dating show, um, and uh, hopefully you Dude. get on. Sometime. That'd be uh, <laughs> That'd be lit, bro. That'd be fucking yeah. lit. <laughs> yeah. Dude, so we'll, we'll I'll, be, on, I'll be back. Yeah, I'll be back in a month, though. I'll be in Oregon for a month. Okay. I'll be back yeah. in a month, yeah. Cool, but I'll keep you posted. Sounds good, guys. All right, Jimmy. You have a good night, man. Have fun. Later, all guys. Yeah, thanks for having me again. I'll see you guys. I'll talk to you soon, Freggy. Talk and to you uh, soon, good to meet you, Peter. Thank you for having me. No problem, brother. All right. Take care, guys. All right, peace. Later. Oh, right, that was fun. Um, get to know Jimmy a bit more. Yeah. Some things that I didn't know about him. That's uh, cool, Hey, hey Philip, are you still there? <laughs> yeah, I was muted. I okay. was doing some stuff. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I didn't know Jimmy was packing, man. Packing what? He said, he said footage? I said, yeah, he said, I'm way bigger than that. <laughs> the footage? No, no, nah, no. nah, 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 nah. Yeah. I'm happy, he trust said me. That. He said that, but <laughs> I, that, that wasn't the joke. The joke was 4.5 4. stars on Yelp, and then he didn't get it, and I was just kind of like, all right. Oh, I won't, yeah, yeah, I won't yeah, tell yeah. jokes I, I anymore. Thanks, Philip. I was like, hey, I was like what? <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was hoping. I was hoping. I was hoping somebody got the joke. I was like, well, <laughs> you know, yeah, he, Jimmy said what he said, and I was like, well, nobody got it. I'll just shut the fuck up. <sighs> It was uh, it was, was kind of hard to hear you uh, throughout the whole time, uh, Peter. It was like, it's just kiss and cut it. And, uh, you you see it when you go back on on the footage. Oh, I'm not sure if it's like it's like a chord thing because like if it's like it's clear and then it's like off and then it's clear and, it, and then it's buffering and it's it's weird. It's probably your internet connection. I think so. Uh, Interesting. Sorry, dude. I failed another week. It, uh, hey, yeah, every, it's every, in that but every, every week's been like different problems you know that's that's the that's the annoying it's, piece, something man. new right yeah. but. Cool, man. um was, Peter, are uh, you planning are you playing go ahead. what what are you planning to get in the computer or no 
Oh, getting getting a new computer. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna because try a few I eventually, before, before, I'm gonna try a few things what? before, um, before I get a new computer. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I'll probably try to get one, um, like towards fall. So after, um, I get my things and money saved up a bit, I'm probably gonna upgrade too because uh, I'm gonna eventually start getting OBS up and going and get like multiple programs up. Right now, I only had Discord up, so okay. You should, uh, Black Friday. Possibly, I don't know. I have to do some research on the, on the PC. I'm not sure what PC is good PC. I would just get with like a gaming PC because you always have like all the RAMs and everything you need. Yeah. yeah. And then you can always I, upgrade. You can always upgrade graphic cards and stuff. Try try get, try my, getting my... A, a better internet first, man. I, I think for for you, it might just be a better internet <laughs> connection. Uh, I think it's my computer, dude. Cause uh, it is in that connection too. Uh, but it's my computer. Cause like even if I even if I'm using my final my, when I'm editing, like it's starts lagging, dude. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Get a gaming PC, especially if you're editing and stuff. Uh, because I do a lot of uh, CAD work on my computer. I have to have something that's high RAM. Yeah. What's your RAM? What's your RAM? Oh. Peter, your RAM is at 16, right? I, I don't know what it is. I, I don't know it by off the top of my head, but. I think you, no, I think you sent me it was 16. I think you, uh, you should definitely upgrade to uh, 64, dude. That would, that would definitely make your computer fucking really, really fast. I'm not sure if you can, like, customize your stuff, your PC. So this is uh this is the end of the show, eh? Yeah, pretty much, man. This is it. Um, thanks, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Every Thursday we live stream at 8 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're including guests now on the show too, uh, as as you guys can see, Philip in the chat, and we just had Jimmy. Uh, if you want to be a part of the show, uh, direct message. Join the Discord, and we'll get in touch. We'll schedule you in. You have uh, you have anything to say, Frankie? Um, yes, I do have something to say. I think the uh, dating show is going to be delayed, uh, just because we don't. We, it's going to be delayed for a couple couple weeks. Okay. Just to let you guys know, and we're going to be doing the so for shows on Thursdays, and the dating show is going to be on Thursday instead of Sunday now. And join the Discord, guys. Join Discord. We have lots of stuff going on there. We have live shows. We have uh, NBA finals. We're going to be showing that next couple weeks. And um, yeah, guys. Other than that, I'll see you guys next week. All right. See you guys. Peace. See you, Philip. Bye. Oh, you don't have to leave, Philip. Oh. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm just closing out all of the uh, the live oh. rooms. Okay. All right. Well, you guys have a good night, guys. All right. See you, what? Frankie. You leaving, Frank? We ain't got nothing to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll talk to you later. What do you got going on? Oh, oh we we usually just.